G'day again guys and thank you for joining me. Today's drawing was inspired by some beautiful lilies that were for sale at my local supermarket. I walked past this display and I saw all these beautiful pink and, and white and purple lilies all clustered together and I immediately got this vision in my mind of them sitting up against this really deep rich magenta background and I knew that I was going to have to make this into an artwork somehow. But there was a big problem with this plan. I am quite allergic to the pollen in these lilies and getting close to them is a guaranteed way to turn me into a sneezy, wheezy puddle of hay fever. So I just kept walking and left those flowers right there on that stand. But as I drove home, I realized that I still really wanted to create this drawing. So I went home and I Googled up some pictures to see if there was something that would give me what I needed. but. All of the pictures that I saw weren't from the right angles, they didn't have the right colours, they weren't inspiring me in the same way as the flowers did. I really wanted the picture that I was seeing in my mind and unfortunately the only way that I was going to get that was to take my own reference photos. So I figured, what the hell, I took some allergy medication and I went straight back down to the supermarket and I bought those flowers. When I got home, I set up my shot very quickly. While the medication would stop me from flaring up, I didn't think that, you know, sticking my nose in these flowers and really getting some really prolonged exposure would be a fantastic idea medically. So I relied on the lighting and setups that I had used previously, especially on my recent sunflower drawing. This meant that I didn't have to fiddle around too long and make too many adjustments with my settings. And it also had the bonus effect of making these two drawings somewhat similar almost enough to be like siblings. With my reference photo taken in less than 10 minutes, I quickly took the bunch outside to the table where I could admire them safely from behind the glass. When I had my image all drawn up, I was ready to start colouring. My main goal with this piece was to play with that deep magenta colour that had inspired me initially, and this is where I met my first hurdle. Now, usually I would use my Prismacolor pencils for that soft blended background. Um, they're really soft and they blend together really, really quickly and easily. But when it came time to pick out the colours that I wanted to use, none of the pencils in the Prismacolor range were light fast enough. I mean, they have a beautiful range of pinky purples, but none of them rate above the lowest level of light fastness. And that's actually pretty common with a pinky purple colour like this. But the problem is I want to be able to display this piece and I can't spend weeks on a project that's going to fade away in the light. So I decided to pull out my luminance pencils for the background. Now I don't have nearly as many pencils to choose from in this range, but luckily I did have the colours that I needed. And it's the crimson alizarin, the perylene brown and the purplish red that make up the colours in that background. Now, the luminance pencils are soft and blendable, just like the Prismacolor pencils, but I do find them to be just a little bit more difficult to blend out, so the background did take me a little bit longer than usual. Now, for the petals, I chose to use my Polychromos, since they're a little bit easier to achieve detail with than when compared to the luminance pencils. But I don't think I've ever drawn anything this pink before, so I'm actually pretty unfamiliar with these pencils. For most of my Polychromos collection, I'm actually really aware of how they look and how they blend out with the thinners, but I just don't have that kind of familiarity with these pinks. So building up the colours on this first flower was very much an issue of trial and error. I pretty much just grabbed out every single pink pencil that I had and put it to the page just to see what would happen. It was a fairly tedious process and it took me a lot longer than it usually would for me to get my head around how I was going to draw these flowers. But once I had worked on this first flower, I had a much better idea of how to approach the rest of the flowers going forward. My main challenge now was to make sure that I was paying attention to which one of the petals were sitting in front or behind of each other, as it was pretty easy to get a little bit lost with my minimal graphite line work. For that final flower, I did struggle a little bit. In my reference photo, this last flower was a little bit older than the others and a little bit faded and beaded up. And a part of me wanted to include that slightly less perfect flower. But as I started colouring, I decided that having that one flower just being too far different from the rest would be really distracting to the rest of the piece. This change of mind halfway through the process meant that that final flower is... It's not my favourite of the bunch, but 
Yeah, I'm really not sure how I feel about that. But with the flowers complete, it was time to move on to the reflection. And no, I'm still not sick of using that black glass table as a prop for my piece. I just really enjoy the depth that those reflections give to the piece. And drawing the reflected image is just still really fun for me. I'm sure I'll get sick of doing it one day, but today is not the day. For a final touch, I used a little bit of the Touch Up Texture and Titanium White Blend to add just a little touch of detail to the edge of those petals. And with those final little touches in place, I was ready to call this one done. So here's the final piece. I am so happy with the way this one came together. I had a chance to play with some very, very bold colours, and now I can enjoy looking at these lilies in a safe and allergy-free form. I would like to just take a moment to thank my patrons. You guys are a huge support to my channel. But since we're coming into a new year, I would also like to take a moment to thank all of my YouTube viewers. I have made the real-time video of me going through the first flower in this piece available to all of you free of charge over on my Patreon page as a thank you to all of you for your support over the year. Link will be down below in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave me a like or a comment to tell me what you think. And if you'd like to see some more of my work, then why not hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys.